Mitchell family. Thank you. I think we've got everything that it takes for a great show. Yeah. Hey, do we have them, Gene? We got a crowd. Good crowd? Yeah. Good looking crowd. We thank you for joining us at home this morning. We're going to have a great time. Our returning champions we've grown to love, and we want you to meet them right now. Will you welcome the Ferguson family? Linda, how are you? I'm fine. Thank you. Now, you got... You've got $1,109, not exactly the gigantic dollars that you could have, but you've brought back your family to become champions one more time. Tell everybody you might have just tuned in the special relationship you have with this next guy. Well, he's my husband and my brother. Think about that. Your husband and your brother. Um, now, and the reason is? The reason is my father married his mother after the, they both became widowed and widower. So you were already married. You were husband and wife first. And then all of a sudden right. your parents married. Right. And you became brother and sister. 27 years we were married before our parents got married. Huh. Kind of an interesting situation. <laughs> Take that. Yes. That's right. Now let me just say this for the record. I don't want to see these people on Oprah. Don't, don't call them Geraldo. They're not coming on your show. We broke the story here first on Family Feud. That's right. On the next Family Feud. That's right. They were mother and father, brother and sister. John and Linda. Who else did you bring? Oh, this is Mitch, my nephew. And your, and your son and your daughter. <laughs> no, no, no. I only son, no. Okay. And, and Mary, who, what is Mary down there? Mary is my stepmother and my mother-in-law. Mary, you started this whole thing. <laughs> I sure did. And down there on the end? And there's Wonderful Aunt Ruth. Aunt Ruth, she's just an aunt. Oh, and your not sister. just. I mean, I mean she's a special aunt. A special aunt. I meant. Oh. Well, you're taking a lot of time there. Let's meet your opponents. I think you're going to love them. The Mitchell family. Craig. How you doing? Good, Craig. How you doing? All right. It's a pleasure to have you on the show. My pleasure being here. Who'd you bring to help you become the champs? I brought my lovely mother, Sylvia. Hi, Sylvia. Hello, did you see me in there? Yes, I Craig did. Craig didn't, did he? No, I, I didn't. I don't know. Okay, all right. I didn't get a chance to say hi, but... Well, uh, we're here now to say busy. hi. Okay. Okay, and? My very, very supportive mother-in-law, Helen. Hi, Hello, how are you doing there? I'm fine. And? My dearest, dearest sister-in-law, Tori. Hello, hi. Tori. <laughs> and my lovely cousin, Marilyn. Welcome, hi. Marilyn. I think we're going to make a great show. I wish you a lot of luck. Thank you. And right now I say, let's play the feud. Come on, London. Nineteen and three-quarter inch. How big are your arms around, Linda? I don't know. I think about seven. Okay. <laughs> Let's see what it takes. Muscle or if the little lady can beat him. Here we go. First family of 300 is going to play for the 5,000. We ask 100 people this question, and we have the top five answers on that board. Try to find the most popular answer. Great question. Tell me a word used to describe someone who talks too much. Craig. Big mouth. Let me see. Big mouth. Huh. Didn't make our survey. Linda, there are five answers there. Tell me a word used to describe someone who talks too much. Gabby. Okay. Let me see. Our associate producers name that. Gabby. All right. Think of a steal. Think of a steal, Craig. You come over here, Linda. Your family has control. John, welcome officially. What could be one of those answers? Number one is sitting right there. Talkative. How about he's just talkative? Talkative. Sure. Come on, come on. Hope for the Mitchells on the steal. <laughs> Chill out, crowd. It is not that bad. <laughs> Mitch. Motormouth. What are you calling me, pal? <laughs> oh, you say, you say, motormouth. <laughs> Amazing. I thought sure yours was going to be there, Craig. All right, tell me a word used to describe someone who talks too much, Mary. Nosy neighbor. A nosy neighbor. Sounds like a personal problem the way you said that, Mary. <laughs> Let me see a nosy neighbor. <laughs> Mitchell family, you're going to get a chance to steal the bank. If Aunt Ruth can't tell me one of those answers. Gossiper? A gossiper. Hmm. Well, yeah, it might be. Good answer. There is. Three answers on that board. Is one of them gossiper? Yes. No, sir. Woo! Let's go, let's go, let's go. Chance for the Mitchells to get on the board. Tell me a word used to describe someone who talks too much. Loudmouth. Loudmouth. Nice That's talking what I to you. That's going to say. Tori, all right. And? Blabbermouth. Blabbermouth. Loud. Loudmouth. Loudmouth. Craig, before you say it, you can go out on your own or with the family. What, what do you want him to say, guys? Blabbermouth. Oh, blabbermouth. 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 The most popular blabbermouth. answer in all the survey is sitting right there waiting for you to give it to me. Blabbermouth. Right. Yes! Okay. 
You got the bags. If one of those three answers is blabbermouth. A word used to describe someone who talks too much. We did not know. Number three. Chatter. Number five. Jabberjaw. That's right, Jabberjaws. We're coming right back with a lot more fun after these. Good start. I thought your answer was easy. A lot of sense. Right now. The Mitchell family has $34. Our champions of Ferguson's have zero. Let's go, John. It's time. We have a face off, Sylvia. The top six answers are on the board. Listen carefully to this question. If you're having your ears pierced, you better sit still while it's being done. Name something else you better sit still for. John. Haircut. How about a haircut? God, you want to sit still, you'll come out looking like Mr. T and you didn't ask for it. <laughs> Mitch, what do you say? Uh, the dentist. Okay, you got to sit still at the dentist's office. <laughs> Dental work. The Mitchell family waiting patiently for a steal. Hi, Mayor. One Hi. more time, what do you say? Having your eyebrows plucked. Okay. <laughs> I like your answers. Yeah. You know, Mayor, even if your fair. answers aren't there, you believe in them, and that's sure, what I like. I You're do. committed to them. Yeah. They're not just answers with you, they're a cause. Uh, nosy neighbors and plucking your eyebrows. That's right. There's nothing that's I hate worse than to be plucking your eyebrows and notice your nosy neighbors looking in the window. That's right. Let me see. Plucking your eyebrow. Uh, huh? It is a sensible answer, but have you ever, you never. Mitch, will you stop clapping? <laughs> You're the only person in this room clapping. Your partner gave the wrong answer, and you're clapping. Come back to us, Mitch. Come back to us. <laughs> Ruth, Ruth, bring some sanity to this. Give All me right. one of those answers. I can do it. Okay. A shave. All right. Great. Let me see. A shave. Good job, Ruth. Good job. Yeah, we need a little bit louder. Okay. All right, Linda. All right. If you're having your ears pierced, you better sit still while it's being done. Name something else you better sit still for. A manicure. Let me see. A manicure. <laughs> Mitchell family, you stole the bank once, and you might get the chance again if John can't tell me one of those answers. I can tell he's got an answer ready to just pop right off the end of his tongue. Pedicure. A pedicure. All right. If a manicure wasn't there, I think pedicure's a good one to go with, John. <laughs> Should we just give him the strike and move on? John, John, I'm on your side. Let me see a pedicure. No, no. Family, you're going to have the bank. If you can name something, you'd better sit still for. Minor office surgery. Minor <laughs> office surgery. Thank you, Marilyn. Church. 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 You better yeah. sit still for it. I thank you for comparing that to having your ears pierced. <laughs> Ellen? Optometrist. Optometrist. Sylvia. Same answer. Okay, you don't have if you say the same answer. Now listen, Craig, they've given you some different answers. You might have a better one. There are three that'll get you the bank. This time it's $71. It's getting serious. What do you say? Church. 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 Okay, we're gonna go with church. We're gonna go with better sit still for church. Okay, if it's there, you got the bank. And if it's also there, I'm gonna pass out, because I can't believe it that it would be. Show me for the bank, church. I want to say, America, shame on you. Whoever sent, the three people that sent this in, if you're having your ears pierced, you better sit still while it's being done. Name something else you better sit still for. Comparing church to that? Change churches. Show me number three. Picture. All right, and number four. You had that one? Yeah. You had the one that counted. We're coming right back with a lot more fun, don't we? We're back. 
The Mitchell family has $105 to Ferguson Zero. And we go with another famous song. Let's go, Helen. Let's go, Mitch. Good luck, Mitch. This is the time that you do it. Helen, here we go. The dollar value is now doubled. We've got the top six answers on that board. Name something specific, often flavored with cinnamon. Thank you, Helen. You said bread. Cinnamon bread. She said bread, and the judge said, ah, well, I can't believe it. All right, show me bread. There you go. It's on the board. Now, there are two answers that will give you control, Mitch. Name something specific, often flavored with cinnamon. A cinnamon roll. Let me see a roll. Cinnamon roll. It is number two into the steel. Helen, may I point, I mean, Mary, may I point out that this is the third time your family's taken control of the question. Two other times before, they've stolen, so don't give them the chance. And I also want to say, Mary, that I feel very close to you, and I can't wait to hear what your answer is. <laughs> I pass. You pass. <laughs> this is not Wheel of Fortune, Mary. You got to go. <laughs> Name something specific, often flavored with cinnamon. Three seconds. Take a guess. If you can't think of it, it's okay. okay. Think about it, because we might get back to you. We might get back to you, so be thinking about it. Ruth, tell me one of those answers, the most popular one sitting right there. Apple pie. How about good old yeah. apple pie? Okay. Yeah. The judge says the top louder. Linda, yeah. we're on a roll now. Oh, it's an answer, isn't it? Give me a... Something specific, often flavored with cinnamon. Eggnog. How about eggnog? <laughs> Mitchell family, you've been here before. If you don't get an answer right here from John, you're going to get a chance to steal. Oh, he knows something now. I can tell it. <laughs> it's candy. Candy, you're right. Oh, Is it up there? Show me. Candy. Mitchell family, can you do it for the third time? Oatmeal. Something specific, often flavored with cinnamon. Marilyn says oatmeal, Tori. Tea. 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 Uh, cookies. Cookies and, and cinnamon? Silver. Put in custard. Custard. All right, now listen to me, Craig. You know how it works. You can go out on your own with them. Oatmeal. What are you going to do? Oatmeal. 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 Three answers for the money. Oatmeal. 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 We're going to go with oatmeal. Yeah. 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 Oatmeal. Yeah. I'll never doubt you again. I doubted you before I was wrong. For the bank, show me oatmeal. Oh, the Ferguson family take that bank. Something specific, often flavored with cinnamon. What is number four? French toast. I knew that. Number five? Apple sauce. Number six? Tea. Who said tea? Oh, you didn't listen, Tori. You'd have had that bank. Right now, $112 for the Ferguson's, and this is 105 and we go. Lovely Mary. Against beautiful Tori. Good luck. We're going to triple the dollar value right now. Put the top four answers on the board. Name a sport in which the participants wear warm clothing. Skiing. Downhill skiing. Tori says ski. Good answer. Good answer. All right, all right. The judge says everyone needs to talk a little louder. Marilyn, name a sport in which the participants wear warm clothing. Hockey. Let me see. Hockey. Bang. Take a steal. Craig, can you repeat the question, yes. please? Name a sport in which the participants wear warm clothing. Mountain climbing. The sport of mountain climbing. Mountain climbing. <laughs> Sylvia, what do you say? Read the question again. Yes. A sport in which participants wear warm clothing. Football players. They got to be warm oh, yeah. when they play. Let's go. Good answer. Good answer. Football. Good answer. Good answer. Good answer. If you know number three, your family is going to win. The oh, game. golly. Oh. Mm -hmm. Helen, the pressure is on you. Uh, sledding. Sledding? Yes. Good answer. Good answer, Good answer. Good answer Helen. Good answer. You gotta be more specific, the judge says. Oh. He's really on one today. Okay. Uh, sledding. Um, Quickly. Mountain, mountain climbing. Is that what? Mountain? Mountain sledding. Mountain sledding? 
Okay. And the judge said, okay. All right, show me mountain sledding. <laughs> Not there. Oh, oh, you think you'll get a chance to steal and win the oh, game if Tori can't come in with the three. How about bob sledding? How about yeah. Yeah. Well, the game? Bob sledding. Yeah. <laughs> Vergas and family, what's number three? You're going to play for $5,000. The sport which participants wear warm clothing. Scuba diving. Scuba diving, okay, Mary? Snowmobile. Snowmobiling, Mitch? Uh, ice skating. Ice skating, John. S snowmobiling. Snowmobiling, Linda. What do you want her to snowmobiling. say? Snowmobiling. 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 You say the sport is snowmobiling. If number three is snowmobiling, you've won. If not, it's the Mitchells. Show me snowmobiling. Wow! Oh, we'll see. What was number three? Dog sled racing. Oh, I have to say goodbye to this wonderful. It's really been fun. It's been our pleasure. You got a sweet cat. Good man. God bless you, Mary. It's a lot of happiness. Ruth, stay right here. Stay right here with me. I need two players for five thousand dollars. Who's playing first? Bye bye, man. The Mitchell family, new champions, playing fast money. Right after this, we talk. We are back. The Mitchell family going for five thousand dollars. Fifteen seconds on the clock, please. Good luck, Tori. Tell me a word people use to describe someone who's a creep. Ugly. An occupation in which you wear a number. Pass. Something stuffed that you'd see in a sportsman's game room. I didn't understand the question. Pass. A state with, a, with an Old West tradition. Uh, Texas. A British Prime Minister. <laughs> Thatcher. She said Thatcher. Did she say it in time? The judge will let you do it. Okay, here we go. <laughs> Tell me a word people use to describe someone who's a creep. You said they're <laughs> ugly. Our survey said <laughs> zero. Occupation in which you wear a number. You said pass. Get no points for that. Something stuffed that you see in a sportsman's game room. You didn't understand the question and said, pass, no points. A state with an Old West tradition, you said, Texas. Our survey said, bam, 30 seconds. A British prime minister, your choice. Thatcher, survey said, bam, and you know him, you know him. We cover those answers. We bring out your teammate. Marilyn, how are you? You look straight ahead, put your toes on that number. You need 106 points for the $5,000. Give me 20 seconds on the clock, please. Here we go, revealing your partner's answers. Tell me a word that people use to describe someone who's a creep. Disgusting. An occupation in which you wear a number. Football. Something stuffed that you'd see in a sportsman's game room. A deer head. A state with an Old West tradition. Nevada. A British prime minister. Thatcher. Right again. Churchill. All right, she said Churchill. How about that? Turn around here. Oh, you had me scared. I had me scared. Come on. If the end of the world was coming, I'd spend the last 20 <laughs> seconds with you because it seemed like an hour, Marilyn. <laughs> Tell me a word that people use to describe someone who's a creep. You said <laughs> disgusting. Our survey said <laughs> zero. 106 points away. Jerk was the number one answer. Mm -hmm. An occupation in which you wear a number. You said <laughs> football player. Survey said <laughs> 32. <laughs> yeah. Police officer, the number one answer. Something stuffed that you'd see in a sportsman's game room. You said <laughs> a deer head. Our survey said <laughs> 40. Yeah. Deer head, the number one answer. A state with an Old West tradition, you said. Nevada, home of the Ponderosa. Our survey said five only. Texas was the number one answer. You're 26 points away. A British prime minister, you said. Churchill. Churchill. If 26 people said Churchill, your family's got $5,000. What did our survey say? Yeah!